There are so many parts of my life journey I haven't shared with you yet. I feel sometimes I am so focused on the present, I forget to look back and see how far I've come throughout the years, especially on my journey as a human, finding joy, friendship, love, and especially finding peace with myself. The more I've been filming and creating and sharing, the more cold I feel to share some of these aspects here. As I shared on one of my first videos, this isn't just an art channel, but more of a Caro channel. A space I want to share my life lessons and humanness and feelings and creativity and my excitement for wellness, for mindfulness for building relationships with plants and mushrooms and for being alive on planet Earth. But to be honest, this wasn't who I always was. On the contrary, I think I actually was on the opposite side of positivity and happiness and hard contentment for most of my childhood and teens. I grew up self-harming myself in so many ways, both physically and emotionally. I grew up calling myself endless names and feeling ashamed of my body and my face and what I liked. I grew up feeling quite alone, to be honest, quite inadequate, as a mistake and never good enough for others nor for myself. I had life-ending thoughts and life-ending actions on a regular basis and I was so good at hiding it but along the way I realized that I would never be able to hide how I felt to myself. I was so lucky to have friends from school who in more than one way saved me from myself in those years. I ended up having best friends who helped me see the joy in the simple things like camping, painting, or watching TV together. But these were in habits that were gone from one day to the other. Growing up, my idea of a family was built from my friends and their families thanks to how close I started to grow up with them. It is not that my parents didn't care, they just needed to work all day, every day. And as I said, I was very good at hiding everything that was going on with me. My journey of self-love and breaking with my harmful habits wasn't one built on one single thing, a cure-it-all kind of situation, but rather on a collection of small steps and moments that started shape-shifting my relationship to myself and to this world, most of the times without even realizing it was happening. Self-acceptance goes so deep and I feel I am still learning this a little bit more every day. I believe a few of the things which brought me to a self-loving heart today include nourishing intimate friendships and starting to cultivate a relationship with myself. making time and space to find out what I like and who I am 
when no one is around. Like starting to build a relationship, a friendship with myself. Nature has definitely been one of my biggest teachers. The day I realized I was just another animal on planet Earth, that kind of put the ego aside and made me realize I'd never be hateful or harmful to a flower or an animal or a tree. And I started asking myself, then why would I be hateful towards myself if I'm just another creation on this planet? I know my spiritual journey has played a big role on everything, but at the end of the day, a spiritual journey, I believe, is just another name for our human journey. It just makes an emphasis on the unseen parts of our human selves and our invisible yet powerful connections to life on Earth, to the magic alive in the world. I started to realize I recharge by myself. I need to make time for myself to chill, to go within, to organize, to nurture myself. Painting and creativity are the tools which remind me I am just another piece of the puzzle. I am being honest when I say I feel when I paint, I am just another channel from something bigger than me. And when I let it flow through me, I remember I am just another part of it all. Plant and mushroom medicine have definitely played a big part on my journey. I've learned how to look within, to cry out traumas, attachments, fears I have carried with me for decades. Working with psychedelics has always been helpful for me when working with respect, reverence, and in ceremony. And by helpful, I don't mean easy. It's definitely been a very challenging journey to look within and to learn how to let go. For the past few years, my connections with plants have been so magical as I have realized that there are so many non-psychedelic plants I am learning so much from by communicating with them with intention, with reverence, and in meditation. Lastly, movement has and continues to be so healing for me. From doing yoga every day to dancing, my connection to my body reminds me that love has so many layers and there are so many different and powerful ways to connect deeper with our bodies, remembering we are bodies as well. It has been so long since I last self-harmed. It's been decades, actually. And it's been so long that it feels like a whole other lifetime. I can't even picture myself falling back on those patterns nowadays. It isn't every day that I actually love every single aspect of myself but at least there is one little thing I do every day to take care of myself and I feel those small steps are what truly make my foundation so strong nowadays I feel the main reason why I wanted to share this with you is because I know I am not the only one who has gone through years or decades of self-harming habits and has dealt with life-ending thoughts. And I know there are a lot of people struggling nowadays. If this is you, 
please know you are not alone. Please know you are worthy and that those actions are not what define you, that those habits can be broken and that we can all start with simple steps and change our stories slowly.